Hello everybody, it's Ashley at This Game Where. Thank you for joining us again uh, for episode 5 of our Building Chester Zoo series. Uh, we've changed the plan a little bit um, for a reason that I'll explain in a minute. But uh, we were going to be working over at this end of the zoo, this end of the zoo, sorry, um, where the rhinos are and painted dogs over here. So instead, we've come the other way. So we, we've done our entrance, we've done our elephants. Instead of going that way, we're going to go... This way over the oh over the bridge uh, <laughs> always throws me off that camera over the bridge this way and we're going to work in this area now this area is quite an interesting area anyway before I explain what we're going to do and why it's interesting I I'll explain why we're going this way instead so someone else is playing the game and has been making videos on YouTube uh, a man called Backblast he is working the other way around it seems to me if, if i do this he's done a few videos on on the painted dogs he's actually also he contacted us to see if he could use some of our builds particularly the entrance plaza he's very kindly attributed those to us in uh, in his videos so hopefully uh, that will that will bring some people over to us and, and i'd like to attend the favor if people are watching this and they haven't seen backblast work then i would highly recommend going i'm going to link to his page down below in the description give it a look he's he's done some really nice things in the game uh, and he's he's got videos showing all of it so uh, yeah please do uh, go and say hello to him so for us uh, the plan is we're gonna work across the bridge I'm gonna pretty up the bridge make that look a bit more as as it does in real life I'm gonna put in the trees lining this this bridle way I think it's called flag lane I'm gonna make that look as close to real as it can look then we've got these areas here so as you can see i've sort of mapped uh, it always always throws me off uh, i've mapped out the pathing i've tried to get that as accurately as possible this is like a picnic area in the zoo uh, so there's this area here which is going to be an aviary we obviously don't have birds in the game but i'm going to try and build the aviary as it is in the in the real world so in the real world it has this net overhanging the whole thing and it houses Eurasian black vultures along with some other other species as well I think rock doves in there uh, European species I think mainly then they've got outside of those they've got two gardens so these two areas are, are zoned off in uh, by me for gardens this is an Andes garden which has got presumably plants that would be in the Andes and then this is the Dormouse garden it was opened in 2018 for for the Wild Worlds Festival I think it was it's to commemorate or to celebrate the conservation efforts that, that Chester Zoo uh, have been making in North Wales. So there, there are some of the projects that we've got on the go. It also going this way means that we will be working in this area, which is going to be the giraffe house. So that's a, that'll be a nice addition as well when, once we've got to that. So that'll be in the next few weeks. What we're going to work on next, though, is this building over here. So I've actually already built the building just fairly simple fairly straightforward uh, glass house greenhouse type affair as you can imagine the butterfly house is a walkthrough exhibit in the zoo so there's going to be a path there are actually two paths running uh, through this through this area here and then this is an open area and they've got the butterfly uh, like pupation station uh, if it's not called that it should be called that I, I don't know if the if the scientific name for whatever it is is the pupation stage or the pupil stage uh, I should I should check that I will check that um, but anyway I'm gonna build that as best as I can I think they also have something like chameleons in there so we maybe will incorporate an exhibit into there uh, one of the exhibit animals into that I don't know which one yet then once we've done that once we've done that we'll pretty up the outside with planting so that is the plan we're gonna we're gonna work on that now and then when it's done i'm gonna come back on and give you a look around what we've managed to achieve uh, stick with us if you would like to skip past the building section and see the finished product it will be at 11 minutes and 20 seconds so just head out head to that point in the video this is the start of the build it took about three three and a half hours it was started with the entrance and the exit i'm not pleased with those but i'll explain why later this though i am pleased with so i said about getting some exhibit animals in i managed to get two in and it makes the building a little bit more 
usable so people that are grabbing it off the workshop which it, it will be available there you'll be able to actually put this to work in your zoos and it will it will be more than just a, a pretty building if you if you think it is a pretty building in my version i've put the giant lansdale and the giant burrow and cockroach because i felt that they fitted with the theme of it being a, an insect house a butterfly house better than most of the rest of the like the snakes and the scorpions and things i feel like they don't really fit this is also the first build that i've done that uses some of the dlc packs so the band the wall at the end there is bamboo unfortunately though i it's too dark and i i don't really like it so i rip it out towards the end of this video and replace it with a lighter natural wood plank uh, effect wall and it's a lot better when when i've done that uh, i am however pleased with this bridge which it's in the in the real zoo there is there are two bridges that join the walkways to this end out this open end area this is the first one and they both run over some water uh, like a water feature like a little stream it doesn't really I, I couldn't get the water feature into this build because of the size of the paths the paths a minimum of a width of four meters so it it made things a little bit difficult it made things a little bit difficult in a lot of ways but getting the water in was was probably the biggest uh, disappointment if I could call it that I suppose this second bridge is something that, again that I'm pleased with I you I do manage to use some of the bamboo pieces from the South American pack for this uh, for the railing. One of the things that I did learn as part of this was that the rope pieces that are they're a really nice addition to the game, but they don't fit very very well around other wooden pieces. Only really around the bamboo. That was a bit of a shame, but I I kind of think I made them work on the on the smaller bridge quite well so you can be the judge of that these two bridges are going to be available on the workshop separately to the whole building so if you want to grab them and have a little look or use them in your zoos then you, you'll be able to do that i'll put the links for those and everything else in the description so we build this bridge and then i i start to get stuck into the planting i think so in terms of what we were trying to do with the planting i started off by sort of plop, plopping a few tropical plants around the space because the it's a, it's a heated building and the idea is that it's like a tropical house I think but equally within those are plants that I would call butterfly plants or I, I don't know if that's not a technical term I, I do know that that's not a technical technical term but butterfly plants things like buddleias uh, mainly buddleias are what I think of when I think of butterflies but we don't have buddleias in the game so what I've had to do is mock them up in a way so what I associate Budley is with are those nice conical uh, colourful flowers you get different colours purples and blues and whites and even some oranges if you're lucky and I've tried to do that with some of the larger bushes so there's there's a big pink bush at the end that I've built up to be quite large and then there's the uh, the yellow bushes that I'm just putting in there that actually that was good timing and then yeah, those I can't remember what they call them, the yellow spiky bushes. We we would call those loose strife, I think, in this country. But uh, they they actually are something that I associate with uh, bees and butterflies. So that was it was good to find those in there. This is the other aspect of the build that I'm not particularly pleased with. It's a, a big, in, in the real zoo, it's a big planted tree i don't know what sort of tree and then it's covered in all all other plants so like climbing vines and and stuff like that and then it's underplanted quite densely but my version of it i it's not finished yet but my version of it when i when i have got it finished it, it is viney but it just doesn't have the foliage that the real version has so i'm gonna have to work on that but at the moment it'll do it'll do for now so this is the this is the <laughs> section of the video where I've ripped out that bamboo wall that was too dark and I've replaced it with what I think is a much better better solution it's a lot lighter and brighter and it, it fits with the feel of the build the building a lot better at least in my view let me know whether you agree down in the comments or on our Facebook page or or anywhere really I really do want to hear what people think because I'm doing all this stuff and the only person that really feeds back to me is me for the most part so yeah please please do let me know even if it's you know 
not not positive let me know because i i need to be doing things as best as i can so this is me finishing off the indoor planting the uh outdoor planting was quite interesting to do because normally when you've built something like this in a in a game or, or yeah on planet zoo when you've built something like this you want to show it off you want it to be seen by people but the, the entire purpose of the outdoor planting in this build was to hide the building because it's supposed to be at least the feeling that i get is that the building in the real zoo is supposed to be oh yeah i should let you know uh, what happened there so the building just disappeared i accidentally deleted it and then it wouldn't let me undo wouldn't let me undo that so i had to reload the game and thankfully autosave had saved me because i thought i'd lost the whole building at that point so yeah bit of a panic but we were saved he, the outside planting, the outside planting was to hide the building. It's to give it sort of like a mystical feel, I think, in the in the real in the real zoo. If you think like fairies at the bottom of the garden, I think that that's what they're trying to achieve with with this building, and I I think they do a good job. And so did I, I I would say. So uh, yeah. Try and get the full effect of the planting and whatnot uh, around the butterfly house. We're going to sort of walk up to it as if you, as if we were in the actual zoo. So <laughs> obviously a little bit drunk because I'm uh, swaying all over the place. So they'd they'd be planting sort of here. This is where the Andy's garden would be. Um, so it's not quite the way it would be, but you can sort of see the butterfly house just just through the foliage there. Now, it doesn't work quite as well as the zoo proper, the, the real zoo does, because this path is a little bit more meandering, a little bit bendier, and so you walking past the bushes and uh, see it reading the signs about butterflies and bees and things without actually being able to see the entrance, whereas in ours we can see the entrance from the beginning. But equally, it works pretty well. I, I'm quite happy with the way that it's worked out the way that i've built it so i mean i'm i might do a few um adjustments at, at a later date but this has taken me three hours so uh, i'm leaving it as it is for now so we've got planting quite tight close planting everywhere in here it's a very enclosed space it was quite difficult to get the planting even as as well as i've done it now if if you agree that i've done it well um we you hopefully saw that we put the paths in paths took up most of the space and then we've had to work around those paths and and i've covered a lot of this path in particular with plants and that's going to cause problems game wise in the sense that people will just walk through them but equally it this is how it is this is how the butterfly house is it's it's tightly packed densely foliated if that's a word <laughs> we built a little bridge here now in the real uh, butterfly house there is some water sort of coming underneath here and it passes underneath the raised walkway over here and is like a little stream down the side closest to the wall but we haven't been able to do that in ours because we, again paths paths take up far too much space uh, we need we need paths that are smaller is my view but there we are um so to make this an actual working building this is this isn't just a, uh, a scenery piece I, i've put the exhibits in now here these would be windows into the breeding rooms uh, i called it the pupation station earlier and i think that's probably apt this is this is where they would breed and grow on the caterpillars so that they can turn to chrysalis and uh, then eventually butterflies now over here in this wall here there would be a window and there would be chrysalis in there if this was the real zoo so you'd be able to see what they look like you'd be able to see them as they emerge from their their chrysalis um again this is what we're able to do with the game and and i'm pretty pleased with it it makes this building a working building we'll turn around we'll go back out the other way uh, this way 
I'm over the bridge now. The planting here is really sort of encroaching on the on the path again. But that tightness, that that sort of claustrophobic feel from the plants is what I was after. So I'm I'm quite pleased with that myself. The only thing that I'm not really particularly happy with are the um, the entrances. I only went for those because they were the closest to what I wanted, which was a sort of a reddish colour coloured. I actually wanted a reddish coloured um, sort of metal, but the metal sort of cladding type stuff that you get in the in the game isn't particularly well suited to uh, to to this sort of building and yeah I I can't find any that I could recolor I thought that they existed but apparently not so this is what we 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 have so there we are then that is our butterfly house I've really covered it up as well because it's sort of like a secret gardens sort of uh, thing that they call it the butterfly journey and if, until you actually come upon the house itself you you don't know that it's there almost I, I guess you, you sort of get glimpses of it through the foliage but for the most part it's covered up and that's what I wanted to uh, to achieve with this build there is going to be here a picnic area and this bit here is a little bit more open for people to see it from from further away so that's largely going to be left as it is and that's it that is our uh, our butterfly house so if you enjoyed it, the video uh, if you could give us a like maybe even subscribe that would be awesome remember what I said about going to see bat blast builds the link will be in the description and stay tuned for the next video